Hey YouTube, I'm gonna do a video on linked lists this morning, but first I'm, I'm a little hungry, so I wanna get a banana. Um, so uh, bear with me for a second. Um, so uh, here's my fruit bowl, and as you can see, <laughs> there's no fruit in it. Uh, but it does have this note, it says table. Uh, I guess I'll have to go to the kitchen table here. Oh, there's, a, there's an orange, sweet. Not a banana, I'm looking for a banana. Um, but there's another note, it says stove. Let's go over there. Aha! This is an apple. Uh, I like apples, but I'm kind of in the mood for banana today, so let's keep looking. Couch. Hey! There's a banana, and ah, there's nothing less. So this is the end of my fruit, fruit train, I guess. Um, so, uh, you know what, though? <laughs> I just thought of something. If my wife goes looking for fruit later, she's gonna end up at the couch. And if I just take this banana, she's not gonna know where to go or there's not gonna be anything. So I've gotta, I've gotta remove this banana. Um, so what I'm gonna do is take the banana and uh, take the post-it note and I'm gonna go, hey, there's a stray orange. Um, there's no note on it, crap. We'll have to come back to that one. Okay, so we'll go over here. We're going to take the couch out of my fruit list and just enter right there. So there we go. Now the apple ends and everything's good. Um, except, you know, we've got to worry about that orange here that we, uh, we were dealing with. So, um, I got to figure out how I'm going to put this orange into, into our list. Um, so you know what I'm going to do? The fruit bowl, it starts at the table, but what I could do is, and let me get a post-it note here, say, is just put TV stand on there. I'll drop that in here. We'll take this note. We'll go to the TV stand. Boom. Now we know. The next fruit is at the table, which then the next fruit's at the stove, and we're good. So there you have it. Now I can get on to teaching you about link lists. So hopefully it was clear that what we're trying to do there was to explain how a linked list sort of operates in a, in a very uh, specific or concrete way um, using real objects. Uh, so if you take a look and think about this a little bit, um, my house that I was walking around and is very close to memory. It's uh, where we're gonna store all of the various bits of data that we're trying to look for, the banana, the notes, everything. So across my house, there's there's that. Um, then you have stuff like the fruit bowl, the table, the stove, the couch, TV stand. These, these are really specific memory addresses within memory. So I can go to them, I can look at the data that they contain um, and uh, and then you know interpret it or whatnot. Uh, then we had things like the the orange, the apple, banana. Those were actually the pieces of data we store in memory um, in the list. So those are the actual items that we want to put in our list, linked list. Uh, we had a note, which really contains the specific memory address of, of where to find that next uh, you know, bit of data. So where to find the next piece of fruit. Uh, and then we, you know, or it might not. So the last one was blank, which meant there is no Fruit. That was the last in the, the chain. That was the last link in the linked list. Um, so, you know, as I was searching for the banana, this is kind of what we did. We went to the house and we said, hey, uh, look at the fruit bowl and uh, get the note from the fruit bowl and then interpret that, which would tell us, hey, go to the table. Um, and so we went to the table. So we went into our house's chunk of memory and looked for the table and we got out two bits of information. We got the orange. And then we also got a note that said, hey, go to the stove um, for the next bit. Well, we weren't looking for the orange, so we went to my house and we went to the stove and we found an apple. And then that apple said, uh, had a note with it that said, hey, go to the couch for the next one. We went for the couch to the couch and lo and behold, we found the banana. And we found a blank post-it note that kind of represented... You know that this was the end of the line. This was there's there's nothing else to chain from there. You could imagine though that you know it might have a 
a something that says bathroom and in the bathroom we'd find another piece of fruit and another note and so on and so forth just infinitely on as long as I have room in my house in my memory to actually store those things now we did when going through this we we removed the banana uh, from it so what we did there is we went back to the stove and we set the note on the stove to that blank note that we found at the banana so we set it uh, or, or at the couch rather um, and so that then and during that operation made the stove the end of the line and removed the banana from the linked list um, so that was a like a removal or a deletion um, and then uh, we also found an orange and the orange is something that we wanted to add to our linked list um, so what we did is we went and we um, created a a link which was the orange at which had the orange in it at the TV stand and we put a a note in it that linked to where the fruit bowl is going so that again if we look back the fruit bowls note list went to the table and so um, now the TV stand pointed to the table and then we went to the fruit bowl and we changed this note out to say hey go to the TV stand so now if you were to do the chain in total it would be start at the uh, fruit bowl go to the TV stand the TV stand points to the table table points to the stove and then the uh, that's where it ends I believe um, and so that's that's an insertion mechanism so all these kind of pieces working together were really the rudimentary bits and we can model this out in code then um, so at first we'll think of this very similar to what we were doing so we have you know maybe a, an item or a class called uh, fruit location um, and in that fruit location we'd have two bits of information we'd have the uh, fruit itself and then we'd have a note so we set the fruit equal to the fruit and we set the note equal to the note um, and really the note isn't what was in there it was really uh, what we need to feed it is the the next location um, and it just kind of manifests itself as a note it's stored within the object as a note um, so then we also had the uh, uh, fruit train, as I like to call it, that started this whole thing. And with that one, uh, it really didn't have a fruit associated. All it did is carry the next location. And that had a note with that on it. Okay. So now we can take these and get... And, and look at it from the perspective of how do we build up that initial fruit train that we started on with. Uh, so we have, uh, you know, the couch, which was a fruit location. And at that fruit location, we had the banana. And the next location was none, right? Then uh, behind that, we had the stove. And the stove was a fruit location that had on it an or in it an apple and it pointed to the couch or it's note pointed us to the couch is the next location and before that we had the table and it was a fruit location that had in an orange and then that was uh pointed to the stove right and then we started all the way back at the fruit train at the fruit bowl and that's what started the fruit train and the location off of that was the table. So put together, those are our various different pieces, the, the bits of data that we link together in our, what is a, effectively a linked list. Um, now, what we started to do there is we started to search for uh, the, uh, the fruit, um, the particular the banana. Um, so we might want to represent this as, well, does this fruit train contain a banana? Um, let's ask that question and see how we would traverse this then. So we could define something called contains. Um, and then we'll pass it a fruit. And then we'll go through. Now, what you do to, to do this is you start at a location, which is the, where the current note says to start, which, you know, to thinking back to it in the fruit train would be the table. We then say... While the uh, location 
is not null, none, rather, because we could definitely uh, go through the entire uh, collection of fruit and never find, you know, a particular banana, or let's say we we passed in, uh, uh, I don't know, a kiwi, and <laughs> you're not going to find a kiwi in this list at this time. Uh, so while that's not none, uh, then we, we continue on, and what we're going to do is traverse it uh, by saying the next location is the current location's note. Um, but before we do that, we're going to say, well, hey, if we found the fruit we're looking for, if the fruit at this location equals the fruit we're looking for, then we're going to uh, return true. Otherwise, we'll say, nope, uh, this doesn't equal the fruit we're looking for. Uh, so we found an orange, then we'll set it our location to the uh, stove. We go to the stove, we loop around, we say, well, that's an apple, it's not a banana. We loop around, uh, now we're at the couch, we find it at the couch, and then we return it. So if we don't find it, then we just return false. So if we, if we run this now, and let's print out uh, fruit bowl dot contains banana let's see if we can uh if that comes out true yep so it definitely finds the banana that we're looking for um now the next thing that we did is we removed that banana so we did hey you know what fruit bowl i don't want to, i'm going to take that banana from there so go ahead and remove a banana from you And so now this removal step will, will be just like contains. It'll take itself and then the fruit that you want to remove. Um, but this time when we're iterating through, when we find the location, we need to go back to the previous location and swap it out. So um, when we were at the couch, we needed to remember that the stove was the last place we went because when we removed the banana from the couch and we took the, the couch out of the linked list, um, we had to go back and augment the the, the stove post-it note to say, hey, don't uh, don't point to anything because you're the end of the line. Um, so what we'll do is say, we'll say previous equals uh, the current location that we're at, um, which is the, uh, or sorry, is this. It's the fruit bowl to start um, or the start of the fruit train. And then we'll say that our location is um, at the note. And then what we'll do is while our location is not none, as we did before, if the location dot fruit equals the fruit we're looking for, uh, then what we're going to do is say, take our previous one, our previous location, and set its note equal to our current location, our current location's note. So what it's doing is saying, take the 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 note that was on the apple which is pointed to couch and then replace that with the value nothing or none that was on the banana um, and then what we can do here is return because we're we have effectively removed it from the the uh, list at that time and now if we don't find it at that particular node what we need to do is copy the previous location to the location that we were currently on and then set our location equal to the next one in the chain, uh, much like we did up up here. And that will iterate us, you know, through till we find and can actually remove that banana. So now, if we do the same prints after we remove the fruit bowl, we should get none, assuming we coded everything correctly. All right, so true and then false. So uh, it starts with a banana in, then we remove the banana. Uh, finally, what we did is is we found that orange and we said, hey, we want to add this orange in there. Um, now, luckily, this is a really simple operation. So uh, we're going to go fruit bowl dot add and we're going to just add in an orange. Now, um, now we know it's at the TV stand, but this is where things maybe start breaking down a little bit. We could actually create a... Um, a TV stand and then add it in, but we'll, we'll have the fruit train be responsible for that now. So, um, so we'll define add self fruit 
And then what we'll do is we'll create a fruit location here. So um, we can do is say self dot note equals uh, fruit location, which in this case would be our um, TV stand is where we think of it. Uh, and then we pass in the fruit that we're copying and then we take our current location. So you think about the fruit bowl that pointed originally to the table. So now the TV stand will point to the table and then this, the fruit bowl will then point to the TV stand. Uh, so the next location is actually the um, self dot note like that. And so that adds in an orange. Um, now, if we were to write out some code to actually print out the entire chain, we would see we'd have two orange. In fact, let's just do that really quick or we'll make a, a quick two string uh, versions to, for this. So um, so underscore underscore stir will actually override the, the string uh, two string kind of functionality that's in Python. So um, what we'll do is we'll start at the iterate over the thing, much like we did with the contains here. So I'll just copy all that down. And then instead of doing all of this, we'll just say, hey, uh, print the location. Or sorry. Um, what we want to do is start with a string. And we'll concatenate on each one as we go. Until we reach the end. So. Um, Can I do plus equals? I don't know if I can equals to value plus um, our location fruit. And then we will take and add in a, um, a comma uh, and a, like that. And that'll add an extra comma at the end, but uh, for the sake of, um, well, actually, we should be able to do something like this negative one and then set that equal to the closing brace and return a value. Let's try that. So now if we do print our fruit bowl, we should see, oh, no, we, something infinite here. Um, we didn't set the location equal to the location of the note. Here. And string does not. Oh, um, so we'll do this. We'll just chop off the, the last bit and then we'll re add the thing to it. And this could probably be done in a much cleaner way, but um, there's that S that popped in again. And there. OK, so you can see orange, orange, apple is what we wanted. If we printed our fruit bowl at the start of it before we re removed everything. You can see we had orange, apple, banana. So um, so everything kind of works out. Now, um, obviously, <laughs> you're not going to name everything fruit train and fruit location and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and you want this to be generic. It's not going to be just about fruit. Um, it can be about many different things. So um, and if we move this into actually implementing a linked list and how we think of that, the fruit location is really a node. Uh, that's the term that we use to represent that. So it's a node in the linked list. Um, the fruit here is actually basically our, our item that we're trying to put into the list. And next location is actually fairly... Uh, fairly correct, although it's usually we would just say next node. Um, so in here, this would be our data or our sorry, our item. And this would be our next. Uh, we might even just call it next. Like that. Now the fruit train itself, again, isn't isn't really what we would use for the term. This is actually the start of our linked list. And now next location is um, just like the thing, the same next node. And this would be next 
Um, now we can we label that for for simplicity because it's easy to go back. But really, what this represents is the head of the list. Uh, And so anywhere that we have dot note, um, we can replace that with, uh, you know, next or whatnot. Um, let me see. I think there's a search and replace in here. Place dot note with dot next. Oop. And we don't need to do that up in there, though. And just a couple more places to replace here. There. And doing that, now we have a, and actually a very basic implementation of a linked list. So um, we could actually change this up to be, you know, our fruit bowl equals a linked list. And by default, it has nothing in it. Um, so we don't need to to pass in our first uh, node or location. Um, in fact, we probably would rarely do that. So let's just set this by default to none. So we create our linked list. Then we go fruit fruit bowl dot add uh, the banana. Then we would we would do it in reverse order. So we add the banana. We add the apple. Let me add in the orange. And then we can print our fruit bowl. And we should be in the same located place we were before. Now we should be good. Okay, so now we're back to where we were, which is good. So, um, but now obviously this contained other things other than fruit. Um, you know, we could we could put totally different uh, items in it and actually use it. But so that's this is the basic imp, uh, implementation of linked list. Now we might want to correct some of the terms. Uh, so adding it, yes, it's an add, but but a way to think about it is more like a prepend. It gives a very clear indication that what you're doing is adding this to the beginning of the list, which is why we have to do this in backwards order. Um, you start with the banana, which is the last item in the list, and then work our way back to the orange. Uh, when you're doing an add function, it, it really, I believe, is thought to be more of a, a append type operation. Um, so for just clarity, we might want to call this a you know prepend. And that, again, is just for uh, uh, clarity in how we do it. Um, now, uh, remove probably is fine the way it is. It's what it is going to remove first, which is a very common thing. Contains is usually good. Um, there's some other operations that you might want to have here, uh, which is like a um, delete. And what this would do is uh, remove the first, um, not delete, but we, or item, but uh, I don't know why that isn't getting blue. Um, oh, yeah, delete. And what the delete would do is actually take the first item out of the list. So it's it's kind of like a pop function. Um, so uh, we could say self dot next. Um, which then we'd have nothing to delete, right? Uh, then we would say self dot next is equal to self dot next dot next. Um, and then that should remove, well, yeah, that should remove the um, the item from the list by effectively setting it to, to the thing. So let's go ahead and test that out here. Uh, so at this point, we have an orange, orange uh, apple. If we do a fruit bowl dot delete, then what we should have is uh, orange apple. Yep, 
Yep, orange apple. Um, another thing you could do here too is as nodes are added in or deleted, um, you keep track of the count. Um, so by default, there's none. As you do this, you add, you would do that. Um, if you delete one out, then you would set self.count to one um, or minus equal one. Um, when you remove an item, if you get to this removal point, you keep the count and track. So this way you could always keep track of, you know, what is the total count um, without actually having to go through and physically count every single item in the list, which is another way you could implement that. So if we wanted to do something like uh, after each one of these, let's say... And then we remove it here. We print the count again. Um, when we prepend, we print. When we delete, we print it again. Um, we should see the numbers kind of go up and down. So we start with three items. We, re we remove one, we're down to two. We add one back in three. We remove for delete one, we're down to two. Um, so those are things. And you can keep building upon this. But you know the basic concept is there. You're, you're basically saying that with within a particular uh, chunk of data or node, it keeps track of the next link in the chain, and then you follow that train all the way to the end. Again, the the, the pluses of a LinkedIn or sorry, a LinkedIn a link, linked list are that you get extremely fast inserts, uh, but they're very very slow to iterate through because you have to walk every single node at a time. So um, hopefully this helps people out there. Uh, I know linked links when I first started trying to understand them were fairly difficult to understand, but um, I'm hoping this helps and uh, have a good one.